Hey there, so Microsoft announced a retirement of GP203 exam. Alright, but what does it mean exactly? Especially for those of you who are planning to take the exam. And well, that's the topic for this episode, so let's get started. Alright, so this week Microsoft dropped this bomb, this news that DP203 will be retired soon. And they have this official communication on ILT blog that I will share a link uh, in the video description. So, after the video, please go through it to familiarize with all the stuff they described. And I will cover the most important stuff. So, first of all, yes, DP203 will be retired soon. It uh, didn't happen yet, but it will be. So, let's take a look at the timeline. And let's see how much time we'll still have to learn and take the exam. Alright, so let's say this is our timeline. And we've got we've got March 2025, we've got February and January. So this is 2025. And right now we are here in the middle of January. And what they announced, Microsoft, is that at the end of March, here, DP203 will be retired. So that's the deadline for all of us to take the exam and pass it. So deadline. After this time, it is no longer available. So that's for sure. So if you want to take the exam, you still have plenty of time, like two months of time. So it should be more than enough to, to learn, to prepare and to take the exam. So that is the thing that will happen for sure. But what will not happen is as follows. So first of all, those various services that were covered by DP203 are not going away. No, they will still work as they worked uh, so far. So data factory, sign up, stream analytics, they will continue working without any issues. Just because Microsoft is dropping the certification, it doesn't mean that the underlying services are uh, phased out. No. Secondly, just because this uh, exam is retired and replaced by the fabric certification, it doesn't mean that the customers will suddenly migrate all their solutions to Fabric. No, it's not going to happen, because what would be the business justification, the business goal? There is probably none. And actually, such migration, it would mean new bugs, new issues, new knowledge to be, to be learned, new skills, maybe new developers, additional costs. So no, that's uh, not going to happen in the near future. And my cat is, I think, disagreeing because she's making this noise. Anyway, it also means uh, that your knowledge that you already have, for that you got for DP203, is still relevant. Because there will be still a lot of solutions built using those Azure data services like Data Factory and Synapse that will be still there. They will need to be still maintained, supported, and expand it with new functionalities. So your skills will be still, still relevant. So don't worry that you will suddenly lose your job. No, that's not going to happen. And basically, my personal belief is that by this move of replacing DP203 with the Fabric exam, Microsoft is trying to force data engineers to learn Fabric, to increase awareness of Fabric through the data engineering community and therefore increase its adoption rate. But that's my just, that's my, uh, my hunch. All right. And I told you that the knowledge that you already have will be still relevant even when you will be working with Fabric. So actually, let's break it down service by service as they are covered by those uh, two exams. So let me draw a simple table that compares DP203 
with fabric. And let's focus on those core services. So in dp 3 we've got obviously data lake, ADLS, Gen2. And now in fabric, it is abstracted by something called one lake. And one lake, under the hood, it uses data lakes, but you will not see them directly. But the knowledge that you have about data lakes will be still useful, because you will have to organize your data in a proper way. You would have to think about the structure. Secondly, you will be using data lakes as a source for your fabric solutions, because customers have this um, data on a data lakes and it will stay there. So you will still have to know how to connect to data lakes, how to authenticate, how to solve those networking issues that hopefully you already know uh, in case of data lakes. Then we had Azure Data Factory in dp 3 And in case of Fabric, we've got Fabric Data Factory. So this is a replacement data factory. Now, it is not one-to-one -one, uh, service between those two uh, functionalities, two services. But if you know Azure Data Factory, then it should be quite easy for you to start working with Fabric Data Factory, even though they are different. For example, in a Fabric version, there is no concept of a dataset or integration runtime. But still, if you developed pipelines in Data Factory, then your start with Fabric Data Factory should be quite smooth and easy. Then we have Synapse Analytics in DP203, and it was a big part of the exam. Now, in a Fabric, it is still relevant, and actually, you will find this Synapse name in many uh, parts inside Fabric. And for example, in Synapse, we had those various pools, like Spark pools, to work with Spark and with notebooks, and it is still valid in Fabric. It is just rebranded to Data Engineering. So we'll have this Data Engineering for Spark. And if you know how to work with notebooks in Synapse, then it should be quite easy for you to start developing them in data engineering part of Fabric. Similarly, we had uh, SQL pools in Synapse, right? And in case of Fabric, we've got data warehouses. So data warehouse, that's the equivalent in a Synapse word for SQL. But please know that it's not the same stuff under the hood. For example, in a Fabric, you no longer have to worry about those 60 distributions. No, it is hidden for, from us. But still, knowing Synapse will make your start with Fabric easier. Then we had, or we still have, Databricks as a part of DP203 exam. And now, in a fabric, it is no longer applicable. Why? Because simply put, Databricks is a competitor of fabric. Databricks wants to be this end to end data analytics platform, just like fabric. So it shouldn't be a surprise for you that Microsoft doesn't want you to learn about their competitor. So it is no longer applicable. But Databricks is widely used around the world. So knowing this stuff will be useful for you, for sure. Then we have Event Hubs. Event Hubs. And now, in case of Fabric, they are not used directly, at least not in the scope of the exam. You will use them only as a source for your streaming um, solutions, so only as a source. But again, knowing how they work, how to connect to, to them will be beneficial for you if you start working with them in Fabric. 
And finally, we've got Azure Stream Analytics in DP203, which is no longer available in Fabric because there we've got real-time intelligence. But again, under the hood, you'll find many similarities. For example, you should remember those various window functions that we used in Stream Analytics to handle time, like hopping windows, uh, tumbling, sliding, and so on. The same stuff is still applicable in real-time intelligence. But please be aware that the query language changes. In uh, Stream Analytics, we used something similar to SQL, while in real-time intelligence, we use KQL. So that's the difference. And if you would like to learn KQL in a fun way, then I have a video that uh, talks about this Custo Detective Agency. That is a uh, great stuff. So please check it out. All right. So you should see that your knowledge will be still relevant even after this DP203 exam disappears. So what are, what are my recommendations for you? So guys, if you already started preparing to pass DP203, continue this, uh, this journey and take a look. You've got still two months to complete this, to learn all the missing uh, areas and take the exam. So don't waste the effort that you already put in preparation. No, take the exam. It will not be a wasted effort. Secondly, if you already have DP203 exam, maybe you uh, passed it like six months ago, then you might want to recertify around here in March, so it will be extended for some additional time period. Then I know that I prepared this DP203 playlist that can be used to prepare to DP203 exam. So what about this one? Is it still worth of watching this stuff, even though the certification will be retired soon? And the answer is yes. Even though it focused heavily on exam preparation, I covered much more in it than the, just those services. As I talked about some general processing, about the history, how it worked, about the way to structure your data, how to organize your processing, about various security considerations, some stuff about the dimensional modeling, importance of CACD. So yes, it covers a lot of this foundational knowledge about data engineering that is still useful even if you start working with Fabric. So I still encourage you to watch it. And the link will be somewhere here. All right, so finally, what about Fabric? So Microsoft is pushing developers to work with Fabric very hard. And probably at some point in time, it will, it will be a really good platform to work with. But is it ready right now? Is it production ready? Well, maybe not. Maybe it is still kind of a half-finished product or a beta release that all of us are beta testers. We'll see. For sure, it is very rapidly evolving. It's changing a lot. So I expect that in a year or two from now, it will contain much more stuff that it has right now. So for sure, it is worth watching this fabric stuff and being on top with the changes they introduced. But still, this DP203 knowledge is still relevant. All right, and that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Take care.